I'ma trust the whole damn process for the record Till we breaking records Reminiscing about the past days Now we rise and fly Journeys to the sky Azimuth inside my grip Always know the way now Beauty fill my days now Take it day by day Sound couldn't be prouder Cause you know we alive Welcome to In Process. Uh, this is Azimuth Theatre's podcast highlighting the festivals in our city, the artists in our city, and most importantly, the artists working within those festivals to uh, make our city the festival city. For this episode, we have none other than Matt Sherman and Jacob Bannigan, uh, both from Improvaganza, uh, an improv festival happening here in the city. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hi. You're leading up to the festival, right? You start in two days now. That's right. Uh, yeah. It starts on Wednesday, June 14th. Are you excited? So excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> super, super excited. Yeah, it, it, we call it like Christmas uh, for Rapid Fire. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we get to, uh, a little bit too into the festival, uh, I was wondering if you would both start just with a little introduction of who you are and how that led you to working uh, with Improvaganza. Should we start with alphabetical order? I'm making yes. you both think. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm ahead in both. In both. In both. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Jacob Bannigan. I was artistic director of Rapid Fire Theater from 95 to 2004. And um, in that time, I started Improvaganza. So that's my connection to it. Um, and every time I'm around when it's on, it's also it's Christmas for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I moved to Austria about 20 years ago. And I'm here for doing other shows and it happens to be at the same time as Improvaganza. So I'm doing what I can to support Improvaganza while I'm here. <laughs> what led you into improv as a, as an art form first? Improv itself. Uh, yeah. As soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to do it more than anything else. Like when I was a kid, I knew I wanted to perform somehow. Mm -hmm. But then when I saw improv at, um, was the Chinook theater, now the Varscona theater. Um, I was like, Oh wow, they just go do it. And I was thrilled. And then everything else was secondary. Everything else came after that. <laughs> Directing, writing, right. producing shows. It's all because I wanted to get on stage and improvise. Hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. What about you, Matt? I first got involved in improv uh, in about 2000, 2001 through rapid fire programming. There's a fantastic uh, event that still goes on, uh, the Nose Bowl uh, Theater Sports Tournament, which is a tournament for uh, high school students to, to play improv in. And that's how I kind of got my first taste of rapid fire. I remember Jacob being on stage in those years and then hosting those shows. Became a performer with the ensemble shortly after that and the artistic director and been running Improvaganza as well as uh, rapid fire uh, these days. Nice. Jacob, there's rapid fire, but then there's Improvaganza. So what was the impetus for improvaganza we had started traveling and going to other cities and experiencing mini festivals or little tournaments theater sports tournaments uh, in the mid 90s and it's just the the level your level of quality of your work increases greatly when you travel mm. as an improviser you see what other people are doing you appreciate what you're bringing and everyone gets better and so to and also there had been festivals in edmonton beforehand but we were in dire financial straits when I got the job of artistic director. Like we were in huge negative minus Great. at the time. Um, and when we got to a almost zero, we were like, <laughs> okay, we have a little bit of, <laughs> we can try doing little things. So I think the first improvaganza was a way to just like, let's just open up whatever we can. And I think what our deal was, we told everyone, if you can get here, you can have shows. We'll mm -hmm. give you a place to stay, but please, if you can pay for yourselves to get here. And that was it. Uh, and it was also a chance for us to um, to highlight our work because the first week of Improvaganza was us presenting, Rapid Fire Ensemble presenting new forms of improv that we were mm. creating. And we do a different two, two different forms every night for a week. And then the second week was theater sports tournament and special guests doing their thing mm -hmm. with a zero budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the impetus was festivals are the best thing. Improv is the best thing in the world. Festivals are the best thing about improv. Right. So for us, <laughs> can we do it? Yeah. Yeah. And luckily people were happy to just say, yeah, we, we'll fly our, ourselves in and come play. And that was at the beginning. Now, Matt, bringing it to now, how has it changed? How has it grown? It's changed a lot. It, the festival has been run by four artistic directors since Jacob. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everybody has kind of had their own flavor or twist they've put on it. 
Uh, I've seen all kinds of really cool choices made with uh, the programming as well as the venues that uh, the festival has been in as well. Um, I was thinking back to the festivals that happened at the Varscona. I remember one year we had a local rap group uh, mm. doing uh, like a hip hop set uh, after the improv in like every single show. And that just like elevated the energy in the room. One year there was a live illustrator on stage kind of doing a visual commentary yeah of the improv happening. Cool. Um, so it's all kinds of cool risk taking and, and, and big, big choices being made. Um, but a lot of what Jacob just said uh, is still very much at the core of the festival. We still do this theater sports tournament as kind of the through line of the festival, which is a really exciting opportunity for all these visiting groups to share a stage together. Hmm. In a lot of festivals that I've been to, it's a lot of showcases by different groups. And you get to see other people's stuff. Um, and that's very exciting and, and invigorating and inspiring. But it's not so uh, often that... Folks are also sharing stage time together and, and making these unique experiences that would never exist otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very much the through line of the festival even to this day, as well as the showcases of, of both the rapid fire folks and the visiting acts as well. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit about those both those showcases? Yeah, yeah. In this year's uh, lineup, in the, in the 2023 lineup, nice. uh, we've got <laughs> what year is it? Uh, we've got um, it's truly, I think, an international festival. That's one of the things we we pride the festival in being is is an international festival, and this feels like the first truly international one since uh, we we shut the festival down for the pandemic break. We mm. did do a version of the festival last year, but the acts were all kind of Turtle Island, North America uh, groups. And so this year we're, we're reaching out to, uh, there's groups from, from Europe, from New Zealand, um, from all over the place. Um, so yeah, let's talk about uh, some of those visiting groups. Yeah, um, let's talk about them. Uh, a couple of returning favorites. We've got uh, all the way from uh, from Oslo, a group called uh, De Tandre Teatre. That's uh, Norwegian for the other theater. They've been to the festival before. We've done a lot of collaborations with them. And they're very exciting. What they're bringing is a their showcase is a, a duo of performers and a, a musician, a musical improviser, uh, who is both bringing a violin and a DJ set up uh, and, and mixing those together. And in their show, the musician controls kind of time jumps um, mm. in, in the narrative, in the story that they're telling. So the musician can send the, the story forward in time or backwards in time. Uh, that's a show called Flashback. Uh, other favorites we're bringing are um, from Atlanta, a group called Dark Side of the Room. We've had them before back uh, when we were running the show out of the Citadel Theater. And it's a bunch of black actors from Atlanta. And uh, their format, uh, they get the suggestion of, an, of a movie from the audience. The audience mm. tells than their favorite movie and they recreate that movie for you but from the perspective of the black characters in that story <laughs> uh and it's very fun it, it's so funny uh but it's also kind of subversive in this way where you really realize how white centric uh, all of our movies everywhere are and right. like, oh <laughs> these are always just supporting characters um so it's so funny and so smart mm. um Last time they were here, they did Speed, the Keanu Reeves uh, <laughs> action movie. And there are black characters in that movie, but then they would also add characters. There would be like a scene where construction workers were putting out pylons for the bus to, <laughs> to drive through. Oh, uh, man, they drove through all the pylons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your story. Uh, so that's a very fun one. I'm excited <laughs> to have those folks back. We're bringing a group from Vancouver called uh, Tightrope Impro. Mm -hmm. They are a lot of familiar faces, some, some good friends of ours. Uh, but the theater itself is, I think, the newest addition to the Vancouver improv scene. They opened basically during the pandemic. Uh, and a lot of very smart, very, very skilled improvisers started this small little company. And so for the first time, as this name is Tightrope Impro, um, they are, are bringing a showcase. And if I can swear on this podcast... Uh, <laughs> I think you can. Uh, we can we'll bleep, bleep it out. Yeah, yeah. Their <laughs> format is called Fuck, Mary Kill. Uh, oh, great. And, yeah, where uh, they start off the show and it, each of the characters gets um, kind of at random an opinion to have of one of the other uh, characters on stage. One of them they want to fuck, one of them they want to marry, and one of them they want to kill. And then the whole format is those characters just playing out those wants and those relationships. And mm -hmm. of course, there's going to be conflicting ones and ones that maybe align beautifully, uh, and the audience is in on that secret as well. So, mm. so that's very fun. Yes, one of the funniest shows I have 
ever got to experience uh, by Derek Flores is coming with a show called El Jaguar Fiesta City Bus Tour. Uh, (laughs) And uh, he plays this character, uh, El Jaguar. He is a luchador, luchador, full mask, full, very tight singlet. (laughs) Very tight singlet. singlet. I cannot stress how tight this singlet is. Already stressed. (laughs) And... He he plays this character, and the show takes place on a bus, not in the theater, but the audience uh, gets on a bus <laughs> with him, and it's a tour of the city of Edmonton. Now, mm. he has like a passing knowledge of the city of Edmonton, so some of the facts that he will be presenting as a part of this tour are true, uh, and a lot of them are not. <laughs> And it is so much fun. There's stops along the way. There's photo ops. There's special guests jumping on the bus at some points along the cool. route. And I uh, cannot wait to share that one with Edmonton audiences. Derek is dynamite. And yeah. I met him in like 1991 or so at a festival here that Rapid Fire was hosting uh, in Promania. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that guy, what, what is that? What is that guy? <laughs> he's, he's like a dynamite in a t-shirt you know <laughs> yeah uh, completely controlled but in all directions right so he can like, you waiting like for him to explode laser dynamite laser dynamite <laughs> yeah. like it's hard to yeah he's yeah. he's one of a kind yeah. and so for that show because it is in a, in a bus is there a limited amount of seating oh or? absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm learning a lot about the capacity of a bus about getting a liquor <laughs> license for a bus uh yeah oh there will be drinks in the bus very possibly <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I think the, the last group to highlight is uh, Tita Collective, a relatively new group out of Toronto, but they are absolutely blowing it up um, in, in Toronto right now. It is a group of Filipino women, uh, five mm. of them, and uh, it's all sketch comedy, a lot of songs uh, about it's an end stories of, of Filipino culture. And, and right after they perform it in Propaganza, they're heading back to Toronto to do the Toronto Fringe Festival. One more uh, international act, that's, of course, our dear friends. Uh, Matt Horgan is coming up from Dad's Garage, and he's going to be uh, directing a format he uh, created called Murder, She Improvised. And that mm. is a, very much an Agatha Christie-style uh, whodunit. Um, uh, we've done it in Propaganza once before, and I'm excited to bring it back to you. Matt nice. is also one of the funniest guys I know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. sweet. Always funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great yeah. energy. Yeah, kind of the, the best embodiment of, like, Southern hospitality. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you visit Atlanta, he will take you to the best restaurants and then take you to the best restaurants beside that. And the next day, take you to another <laughs> best restaurant. He's unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, to talk about the, the local uh, acts that we're showcasing, we're kicking off the festival um, with two fantastic local uh, acts. One is a troupe from Rapid Fire Theater, Jolene Ballandine, Gordy Lucius, and Joey Lucius. They have recently created a little trio they call Best. And the way that they describe it is it's improv with boy band energy. And they come out with track suits <laughs> nice. and they get suggestions of their like set list from the audience and they run through their set list of improv scenes. But it's got this uh, teen concert vibe to it. And it's so exciting. It's going to really kick off the festival. Another local act that I'm really excited to put into Improvaganza, a fellow I met just earlier this year, uh, MC Red Cloud. He's uh, part of the team uh, behind Bear Grease that was uh, mm. tearing it up or still tearing it up uh, around the world. Yeah. Uh, and we worked together earlier this season on a show that was his autobiographical story, um, Evangelism. And he, I think in 2014, had the Guinness World Book record for longest freestyle rap. Uh, and wow. so he's a freestyle rapper. I think it was 18 hours. Is Damn. Is, yeah. <laughs> Without stopping. Without stopping. And not yeah, a right. single rhyme the whole time. <laughs> yeah. He was talking. He was just talking. <laughs> he was just, <laughs> just watching I, the time. I've seen this video of him like with, with the auditor following him <laughs> through his day. Wow. He's ordering taquitos <laughs> at 7-Eleven, but like rhyming it all. Um, so he's coming and he's going to be opening uh, the festival as well on our, on our opening night. Uh, doing some freestyle of course it's it's improv um and uh he was saying he can get things out of people's pockets uh in the audience and then just do a rap about whatever objects he he gets from from the audience he'll also be participating throughout the festival as the official commentator on our theater sports tournament so after every round of improv uh, we'll get some freestyle rap from him to to, uh, highlight what the audience just saw very cool and he's from here He's uh, from here, from the area. Actually, originally he's from L.A., um, but uh, he's he's spending his time in the Edmonton area cool. these days. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And now how long is the festival? Runs for 10 days, so from June 14th to the 24th this mm-hmm. year. 
Now, you recently also have a new space, right? That's right. The Rapid yeah. Fire Exchange just opened in March of this year. What does having your own space uh, afford you in terms of like for the festival? It changes a lot about the festival. Uh, as we were planning the festival this year, a lot of the things became a lot easier. Mm. Previously, when we would do the festival, we would have to, any event we would want to do, we would want to, we would need to uh, rent a space. If we're going to do a show, we need to rent a theater. We're going right. to have some hospitality for our folks. We got to make plans to go to a bar or a restaurant or book a room in the hotel or something. And now it's just like, oh, we'll do it at our place. Yeah. <laughs> you got the lobby, you got yeah. the stage, you got the backstage. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it, it makes that so much simpler. Um, it feels more like a house party. It's just like, well, we'll just have people at our place. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's it's just amazing because when I started improvising, we were the low man on, on, on the on the list of the, <laughs> right. the theater mm -hmm. every Friday night, the late night show. And um, the dream was always, oh, one day we'll have our own theater. And then we were in huge financial troubles and was like, hey, okay, it's not going to happen in my generation. And then a few generations later, it's finally happened. And I'm just, I'm thrilled. Is it? Would you say that the the time slot that the festival runs in, is that also because of that? Because it was a shared space that, like, this is the week that's open. Yeah, it would be the end of the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. People would like, oh, well, they didn't want to do a play in the summertime, so right. we would so we'd do put it, it on then at the end of the yeah. theater season. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite things about this <laughs> festival is sharing the overall experience with the visiting acts. So the the fact that it's in June means that these folks have never seen an 11 p.m. sunset you know, right. coming up to, to our northern city. So they'll finish their show and they'll walk out the front door and be like, the sun's still up? That blows their minds. So that's exciting. Well, the Norwegians will be used to it. Yeah, the Norwegians yeah, yeah. will be like, yeah, same <laughs> yeah. old, same old. Uh, but the uh, hospitality is something we really pride ourselves in in the festival too. The Edmonton audiences are also so fantastic and it's always such a treat to share the Edmonton audiences with the with the visiting acts. There's so much great improv happening in Edmonton year round, and so the mm. audiences here really know how to participate in an improv show, and I think that's a real treat for a lot mm -hmm. of the, the visiting acts. Now you're talking about the fact that this festival happens towards the end of the of the season of mm -hmm. the theater season, um, because like in the past traditionally it's like ah improv they can do towards the end and we can just slot them in. What do you think this festival in specific? brings to our city that you can't get year round. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. exactly that. These these groups that are they're specialists in their field and um to also show that that improv is bigger than just the guys on the cor at the corner theater doing this, mm -hmm. that right. it's a phenomenon around the world and that we share this language with people around the world. Mm -hmm. Um I'm always thrilled to be in a new city and a new festival and, and just get to feel it, that improv is important to all these cities and all these, because theater is localized. You have to be there. Right. We can't just broadcast it. Um, and so for us to get people to come off their sofa, come down the street <laughs> and see people from Norway mm -hmm. and yeah. understand, oh, it's the same thing and this is how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Their specialty. Yeah. It's and a little like a uh, heritage days. Sampling little bits yeah. from around the yeah, world. Around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy from around the world. A little bit on a stick here, a yeah. little bit on a stick there. Yeah. Now, as, as the festival happens and as you get to work on the festival, what does it uh, afford you as artists? Like as, as individual artists, what has the festival allowed you to kind of explore or grow in? Or especially like, Jacob, you've, you, you, you said you started it and you've been away for a while, now coming back. Like, what does that feel like? And what does that kind of like make you feel? realize that it might have given you in your career uh yeah like i explained earlier when when you go to another city and you see how people perform it's totally inspiring even if they're not good you, know? <laughs> you, know, so you go oh that's okay they're bad in a different way than we're bad you know uh, but it also helped us to re realize oh but we're good at this and and um like i say once you start traveling everyone gets better you learn yeah not just by by observing and stealing ideas or formats or yeah, styles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you kind of go, oh, this these are our strengths, and we can build on that in a major way. Yeah, major. Yeah, yeah. And another another aspect of it is that we get to teach each other, not mm. just by like, by example. Like sometimes it's uh, uh, I have to learn that technique, or you just see it and you go, oh, they do that with it, and and mm -hmm. and it's like it's like um, a secret code in a video game <laughs> when you suddenly <laughs> learn, oh, I can do that. I can double jump. Right. Because I saw them do it. Right. When I first saw the crumbs, for example, they would just change. They would switch characters. 
It was the first time I saw people just go, I'm going to play that guy. And we just switch characters with each other. Huh. And I was like, you can do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. So it's unlocking these superpowers. Yeah. Um, and then we also have opportunities to have workshops with each other and teach each other. Yeah. And, and that's fantastic. If, if you're working on something that's even not quite audience friendly, it's just like it's playing with our tools and let's stretch, let's stretch our, our skills until they break. Mm. You know, how far can we go with these? Um, I would go to Seattle to unexpected productions there for, for festivals. And Randy, the director would bring in, uh, performance artists or sketch, uh, like painters or sketch artists or, um, true, true story artists, things like that. And not about improv and all these improvisers would learn different skills. And then we go, okay, how do we put them on the stage in mm. what we do? Um, so that's the thing it, 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 for improvisers to teach improvisers and learn from other improvisers is fantastic. And then also when we can cross pollinate with our other art forms, uh, it really affords us these fantastic opportunities hmm. that we would never get otherwise. Now I realize we're talking about this festival and improv and all this stuff, but for anyone who's listening and does not know what improv is. Oh, we're right into the beginning. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's flashback a little bit. Um, but I'm just wondering if you want to just talk a little bit about what improv is a little bit from both your perspectives. I'd, I'd just, I would be interested to hear both of yours. Uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's funny. Cause for us, it's, we live and breathe it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then there's people that literally live across the street from the theater and they've never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> like we've been here for 30 years. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. You know, literally every show we do, we kind of do a poll off the top. There's always going to be someone seeing the, the improv they've for the never very heard first of it. time. Yeah. 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 Uh, but if you haven't, we're not judging you. But where the hell have you been? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly judging, yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, as improvisers, we go on stage with no planning of what the content of the show is. We know generally the structure. How, yeah. how many stories are we going to do? Are we going to have teams of players? Uh, um, so we know the, the skeleton mm -hmm. of it. But mm -hmm. then what happens with the, the content is always made up on the spot. So if we say, today it's going to be an improvised play. Okay, we know what that looks like. It looks like characters coming into a situation and speaking and having problems and going through stuff. Mm -hmm. But if it's improvised, we don't know what those things will be and who those characters will be. So right. um, we might know our structure. We don't know what's going to be in the structure. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's theater made up on the spot. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, yeah, sometimes that structure might be very specific. Like we are specifically heading out tonight to deliver on this genre and we have costumes and everything. And sometimes it's a lot more open and, and loose than that. And so what happens if you ever get caught, like stuck? Is there ever a point where you, you get stuck in a story and, and you don't know how to wrap it up or how to continue it or? Should we tell him? <laughs> <laughs> the secret. The secret. Yeah. The secret. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> uh, well, the, the secret is, uh, it's, it's part of the, it's part of the process. Yeah. It's you're, you're always stepping off into nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the time your foot falls, there's going to be something there. That's just it. And so you just have to enjoy the not knowing. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you ever want to control it, you're, you're on the wrong path. Totally. Mm -hmm. So it's this joy of not knowing exactly what, what it is. Yeah. But having a sense of, oh, it feels like it, it's, it wants to become this. Right. So th we get this question a lot of, do you ever run out of things? It's like, no, I just take what's the next obvious little step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't have to do big moves. I don't have to know what it's going to become, but I know what my next step is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a tricky question to answer because I, I don't think we do get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. We just right. sometimes just don't know what comes next, but we'll find it. Yeah. And the thing is, sometimes people think that when you get stuck, that that's all, that's all you are. You are stuck. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, no, it's just you don't know what exactly the next thing should be. That's right. It. It's like telling, telling yourself, I don't understand, period. <laughs> but if you say, I don't understand yet, then you're totally open and you're curious. Hmm. Uh, and it's a, it's a small switch in your head, mm -hmm. but it means a lot yeah. of it will be fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's okay that you don't know. That's the, whole, yeah. that's the whole thing. A big part of the training you do as an improviser is removing that ego that's telling you that you have to get it right and embracing the failure because that's where all the fun is and that, those are all the little gifts that uh, get given to you as you're discovering what it is you're doing on stage. It's like when Wiley e. Coyote runs off a cliff right? <laughs> right, and doesn't know that he's run off the cliff yet 
<laughs> Until someone goes, uh, <laughs> you run off a cliff. Ah! So as long as you never look down, it's fine. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Just don't look down. Just keep swimming. Yeah. So speaking of not knowing what's coming next, could y'all improv a little scene for us right now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was thinking we could come together with some, would you like some prompts or would you like to just say go? I'd love a prompt. Uh, you'd love a prompt. Yeah, well, we're sitting in two chairs here. So yeah. Let's, let's use that as a reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is our medium. This is probably an audio forward experience. Yeah. yeah. So prompts, what would you like? Uh, where, where could we two be sitting in two chairs? Does anyone in the audience have an idea? Where would two guys sit beside each other? Movie theater. Movie <laughs> theater. Great. Do you want anything else or are you good with that? That's all. That's good. That's yeah. all you need. <laughs> He's in something. Mm, the one with the beard? Which one with the beard? The one with the lines with the beard, yes. Mm -hmm. Not the extra in mm -hmm. the back. He's in something. What is he in? Ah, uh, you know, I can see the face, but I can't picture it. Okay, okay. Okay, what if, what, okay, okay. Shh, you be quiet. These people. We reserved these seats. Yes, we have a right to, okay, okay. Okay, so take off the beard. Mm -hmm. Shave mm -hmm. it off, right? Mm -hmm. Now who, okay, okay, yeah. 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 Who, who does he look like? The eyes, the yeah, eyes, look at the it's eyes. It's familiar eyes, you yeah. know? Ooh, oh, ooh, oh, ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 you shut up. Whose eyes does he have? Whose eyes does he have? <laughs> okay, no, we'll be quiet if you if you tell us whose eyes he has. Please answer the question. Who, who does he look like? All right, now Anusher has come in and told you to be quiet. <laughs> God, that usher is really familiar. Hey, quick question. <laughs> Whose eyes are those? Whose eyes are those? Ah, thank you, thank you. Tom. Oh. Tom. Tom. <laughs> Man, trailers are intense. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Why, thank Daddy, you. Cloud? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know I didn't ask. I, I didn't give you a heads up, but you know, I thought in the spirit of of the episode, happens a lot. I've done a lot of interviews. Uh, yeah, it's like now do something. It's yeah. like yeah, we can't say no. We're improvisers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's better conditions to do it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's actually a great segue to what brings you to town. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. unrelated to improvaganza, but uh, you're, but improv. You're, you're here doing yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in a group called uh, Gordon's Big Bald Head, and mm -hmm. we've been performing at the Fringe since 1992. Yeah. And uh, this year we're doing a show at the Mayfield Dinner Theater. Oh, very cool. Cluster Flick. Huh. Where we're improvising a movie every night. Cool. And we start next week on uh, the 20th. And so do you, because I know uh, usually the Mayfield uh, does very a good. one act break, one act. Is that kind of the same format that you're doing or is it like a one act, no break in the middle? No, luckily they said, oh no, you guys can just do like 75 to 90 minutes. And we're okay. like, oh, thank goodness, because we do usually one piece. Yeah. So it, we were really racking our brains of how do we start improvising a play mm -hmm. and then have a break yeah. and not think about how yeah. to do the second act. Yeah. So I was like, oh God, oh, how do I do this? So <laughs> luckily they said, no, 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 just do without a break. And we we're like, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's funny because that's the exact same question I was about to ask you. Like, how do you take a break in the middle of improv? It is possible. Yeah, we yeah. have done it. We're in, in a, a, a narrative story. Now it's a break. And we just consciously just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And um, really helps is if we when we come back, we might get something from the audience to, sp to spur the second act. Yeah, it's right. got to so be really... different in some way. Yeah. 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 And same thing for the audience, too. When they get that break, they're like, well, those guys are just back there talking about what they're doing next. So to to reassure them that it's still present and immediate yeah mm -hmm. you, you got to mix it up yeah, yeah the showstoppers would get people tweeting suggestions in the intermission to inspire the oh, second act cool uh and it, it, we did a show at the fringe here in 93 or so called suspect where we had a break in the middle it was semi-improvised patty styles directed it uh, and we just had to stay on stage so the audience could see oh they're not talking to each other <laughs> they're not planning anything and how long is that running that's running for, uh, we're doing five weeks of shows, eight oh, shows wow. a week. Yeah, me and Ron Peterson and Mark Muir, Gordon's Big Bald Head. Cool. Because I know what Oh, and we have, sorry, we have an also a wonderful musician, uh, DJ Ash Ball, 
who's from Edmonton and she's been living in New York and she's a fantastic musician. So cool. Really and the music I'm, I'm assuming has to do like it, it affects the story or is it just to, to set the, the, the settings? Uh, yeah, both. Yeah, of yeah. course. She'll, she'll bounce off of us. We'll bounce off of her. So back to Improvaganza as the festival. Oh, sure. It's all about Improvaganza. (laughs) I know. (laughs) (laughs) I'll let Jacob, we can get into the personal question. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) Um, For anyone who might not have ever gone, what are some tips of the festival that you would give them? Or things to like prepare them so that they can enjoy the festival to the fullest? You got like a festival pass kind of thing. Yeah, we have have a a, a couple levels of festival passes. Um, I think four, six, and eight shows. So it's a really easy festival to immerse yourself in. I think one of the exciting things about the way we program the festival is that, we're talking about two-act shows, The in a lot of our shows, the first act of our show is going to be a theater sports match. Two teams, two groups, visiting groups, maybe a local group, playing against each other, um, and you get a little taste, a little amuse-bouche of uh, <laughs> what it is that that they do. It's not their showcase, but you get a sense of their style. And then the second half of the show is that featured showcase by one mm. of those visiting groups, doing what they do best. Um, so each show has that teaser of, of something you might want to catch later on in the festival. Like, oh, those guys were amazing in the first act. I would love to see more of that, or that really spoke to me. Um, so it's kind of a, a choose-your-own-adventure thing that you can follow through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our opening night of the festival, we try and do that as much as possible and get little snippets from a bunch of the groups who uh, who are in town and, and, and give folks that, that sampler platter yeah. and, and see what they like. So you're saying opening night's the best night to go? Opening so night's like a great out. show to yeah. dip your toe in and, and, and see what it's all about. Um, but just come. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> so jump on that with us and, and we'll figure it out together. Yeah. Any improv show, even if you see the same group night after night, it's going to be a completely different show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and an improvaganza is a completely different show and it's completely different people and mm-hmm. new mix em ups and new teams playing against each other. It's, it's, we never repeat ourselves. Yeah. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we get bored quickly. <laughs> let's, <you> know, <laughs> let's keep it going, you know, Let, yeah. uh, let's surprise each other. After um, the festival, I will be able to tell you what the absolute magic moments were, uh, but you got to be there with us to, to yeah, discover it. Yeah. If I'm someone who's never done improv before, is there workshops as part of the festival or is that like outside of the festival? Yeah, typically we have offered workshops to the public as well, uh, rare opportunities to work with the visiting folks, uh, as we are still rebuilding our capacity coming out of uh, the pandemic, we're only mm. offering one workshop this year, uh, but that's with uh, Kristen King from Dark Side of the Room. Oh, and yeah, she's, she's amazing. Uh, <laughs> she's and great. she'll be teaching a characters workshop on the closing weekend of the festival. Very cool. Anybody can register for it. Now, just to kind of round us off, I'm wondering if you can talk about maybe like two points that stick out when you think about Improvaganza. Was there any points where you're like, this is this is pretty epic. I'm going to remember this for a while or anything that you remember happening as part of shows. You've kind of talked about a few throughout our conversation, but just wondering if you have any that like really stick out as like great moments for the festival. One of my (laughs) uh, biggest stress moments that became one of my biggest joy moments in this festival was uh, I think in 2018 or so around there, uh, we had a festival headliner that year, Colin Mockery and Greg Proops were, were performing in the festival. And this is when we were producing the festival at the Citadel Theater. We were using three different venues in, in mm. the building. So we're using the two kind of 200-seat venues that we would normally use. And then we added the 700-seat um, McLeod Theater um, as our kind of main stage. We had sold out that room uh, for, wow. for the Colin Mockery and Greg Proops show. And we were throwing in a bunch of festival acts and... It was going to go incredibly well. Uh, Colin had a gig in uh, South America somewhere uh, the day before he was supposed to join us in Edmonton. And whoever had flown him down there for this gig uh, had him on a private jet. And they were going to fly him back uh, to wherever he wanted. And so he was just going to take that private jet right back to Edmonton. This is perfect. This works out great. However, a uh, hurricane... Uh, decided to show its face uh, in the region, and that tiny jet could not take off. So uh, Colin had to get a commercial flight to to get to Edmonton, which moves a lot slower, and uh, there's a few stops along the way to get to Edmonton. So I get a call at about 7 a.m. in the morning of the big show uh, saying that Colin might not make it for the show tonight. Um, The plane can't take off. This was even before he had purchased the ticket to get here. 
And so we kind of looked at, he finally purchased a ticket. He had his whole route planned with layovers and everything. And we had it mapped down to the minute. He's going to be 45 minutes late for the show. Best case scenario. I don't, I don't know. What do we do? Do we cancel all these tickets? Do we disappoint an audience that it's only half the bill that you get? Um, and so we, when the audience arrived, we held the show for as long as we thought was acceptable before people get grumpy so right. 15 minutes we pushed the start of the show just buying every second we could uh then we go to host the show and say you know what? we got some great local openers for you and so the uh two of the guys cory and julian uh, had been doing a show an improvised ted talk at the time so they made a custom ted talk show talking about hurricanes uh for to open the show that ate up 20 minutes and they're like, okay, and now, folks, uh, we, we let the audience in on the secret. We're like, here, straight up, here's what's happening. Colin is delayed. But in the first half of the show, uh, Greg Proops is already here. We're going to put him on stage. So they're so excited to see him. There's fans there. And we do, you know, a whole first act with him. Uh, and as I walk off stage into the wings after the first act, there's Colin in, like, shorts and a T-shirt, uh, just ready to do the second act of the show. Yeah. Uh, but it was this great moment heading on to the stage at the top of the second act of the show. Uh, the audience is in on the secret now, and they're anticipating, is he here, isn't he here? And this huge positive eruption on, of uh, applause when he comes out on stage. Just so overjoyed mm. to, to see him there, and it just made for the best show ever. Cool. Yeah, even better because of the huge doubt of will he even yeah. make it then. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's the good arc yeah. for the <laughs> In fact, people came up to narrative. me after the show and like, that was all fake, right? You, you just wanted to, <laughs> it's just like, no, <laughs> I almost had a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a, a big memory? No, I have, I, have an, I have an image in my head that just always stuck with me when we had a party in the theater on the stage at the Barscona. And just, I have a photo from that night of this guy from Vancouver, Michael Teagan, wonderful improviser. And the photo is him jumping off a high platform with his shirt off, full out, like just arms and legs akimbo in midair because he's jumping onto the big spongy die. But it, someone just happened to go <laughs> click as he was. It's, it's a perfect. <laughs> and for me, it was like, oh, that was such a great moment. And we captured it. And because it's all, it all goes through our hands, all these moments. But mm -hmm, right. uh, for someone to go, I'm going to take a picture. And they're right when he goes, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So that's burned into my memory. Yeah. Amazing. Very nice. To wrap us all up, uh, do you want to let us know where we can find more information about Rap Fire, about Improvaganza, about uh, Gordon's Big Bald Head, and kind of just plug yourselves? Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, anytime. <laughs> uh, you can learn all about Rapid Fire Theater at rapidfiretheater.com where you get all of our, our show listings and our festival info. Um, and we're on all the social medias as well. Great. And what's your social media handle? Is it Rapid Fire Theater? It, for the most part, yes. Except for on Twitter where we are at Theater Sports. Great. Yeah. <laughs> You're at Theater Sports? Yeah, Twitter? we were early in on Twitter. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Snap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, Gordon's Big Bold Head is uh, on Instagram. Uh, we we don't have a website. We are just we sh we show up for our shows. That's all. So yeah. <laughs> we just got an Instagram account like a couple of weeks ago. All right. Called Gordon's Big World Head. So perfect. Well, thank you both so much for joining thank me you. and for having a chat about this. And uh, and I'm just going to take a second to thank our sponsors, Canada Council for the Arts for the original funding of this project, the Edmonton Heritage Council for the second season funding. Uh, we also want to thank French Theatre, uh, Azimuth Theatre, Rapid Fire Theatre, uh, our guests, our audience for listening. Uh, Selena Payne Show in the back, uh, our sound technician, Woo Woo, uh, and Oscar Dirks, uh, our editor. Um once again, thank you all for joining us, for listening in, and we'll see you in our next episode of In Process. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, pal. Enjoying the conversation? Traversing the Azimuth is a brand new branch of Azimuth Theatre, aimed at connecting artists with a wider community, deepening mutual understanding, and getting to share each artist's process and journey. You can help out by going to azimuttheater.com slash sponsorship. Your sponsorship will go straight into paying more artists to come and share what it means for them to be proudly in process. For more information on Traversing the Azimuth, go to azimuttheater.com slash traversing.